Hey everybody, this is Garrett with Earth and Time and today I'm visiting the Naranjo Natural History Museum in Lufkin, Texas, about two hours outside of Houston, Texas, and maybe about two and a half to three hours from Dallas, Texas. I'm really looking forward to checking out this place. I drove past it. I didn't know what it was. I don't know what to expect. Let's go take a look inside. One of the things the folks gave me as I entered, they actually give you a map of the Naranjo Museum here. And you'll see it's actually quite large. It's quite an extensive collection. So I'm going to start off, I guess I just went to number one and right next to me is number 10 or in the front's 10 and now I'm in number nine. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to walk down this one side, come back and we'll zigzag back and forth. You can see they have little dinosaur tracks for how you're supposed to walk. So I'll walk you through this and show you some show you some of the highlights. My first impression of the Naranjo Natural History Museum in Lufkin, Texas, and it looks pretty spectacular. I learned that the gentleman that owns this, Dr. Naranjo, is a neuropsychologist, and this is his hobby. So this is his private collection that he's put together through the years, and this is a passion hobby of his, and I'm so excited I'm able to come here and check it out and support him. So here's some pictures of Dr. Naranjo and it looks like they're excavating some bones there. And here's a foot. Whoa, it looks like a hadrosaur foot. So hadrosaurs are pretty near and dear to my heart. I worked on some dinosaur trackways in Utah. I'll do a video on sometime. Here's one of the femurs Dr. Naranjo excavated. And this is actually a, an Apatosaurus femur from the Jurassic period, about 151 million years ago. So right off the bat, I'm pretty excited. They have a little dig spot where I can pretend to be a paleontologist. So when I grow up, I want to be a paleontologist. Look, I found a trilobite and I found a tooth. This is fun, a lot of fun for kids. And this is a lot of fun. It's a motorized, T-Rex skull, just showing you how big they think the bite of the T-Rex would be. All right, so this is me and this is the T-Rex mouth and look at the size of that opening. I could very easily fit in there and after a couple bites could get swallowed. And look at this, they have a, a mold of a T-Rex track and look at my hand compared to that. One thing I'm really impressed with already with this museum is how there are these simple explanations for how things happen like fossils or the rock cycle. And this makes it really easy for people to understand. So if anybody who's in the Lufkin, Nacogdoches, even Houston area wants to come quickly learn about earth science, this is a good place to come. And Dr. Naranjo has done a great job putting this together. I really like how Dr. Naranjo has built the geologic timeline into the museum and how he shows dioramas of what each time would look like. And with those dioramas, he also has fossils that represent the creatures that you would see in those dioramas underneath them. It's a really nice way to walk through the geologic history of the earth and learn about the different geologic time periods. But one other thing I wanna point out is that I like that they talk about the geologic time period, what they thought the atmospheric levels were, what they thought about the climates, kind of the fossil record, right? Or, and starts talking about the life forms. I like it's done in a very simple way. This is really neat. This is a comparison of raptor skulls. So you can see the different types of raptors, right? Again, everybody's familiar with kind of Jurassic Park, which would be more like the larger Utah raptor size. But up until, the Utah Raptor was found when they were making Jurassic Park, that kind of dinosaur, that size of a Velociraptor actually wasn't known. Most of the Velociraptors they knew about, or the Velociraptors and Raptors they knew about were very small. In fact, a lot of them were chicken sized. So when they found the Utah Raptor, when I believe it was when they were filming Jurassic Park, um, Serendipity stepped in and they actually found a similar type of dinosaur. That was really exciting. And I believe you can actually see the Utah Raptor still in Utah and you have to look up what museum that is. 
And look here, they actually have a Velociraptor, which I was talking about before. And looks, it looks like you can push this. Okay, let's see what's going to happen. Absolutely nothing. Let's try it again. It's pretty cool. In fact, you can actually see the smaller Velociraptors, which were the first types of Velociraptors they had when they were making the Jurassic World movie. They didn't have the much larger, or they didn't have evidence of the much larger Velociraptors when the book was written or when they were starting to do this. So, interesting. And of course, they have everybody's favorite, the Pachycephalosaurus. No, just joking. Although those are pretty cool. They have a T-Rex. And you'll see, I have to back up it's so big. This T-Rex is gigantic and really cool. I really like that this talks about some of the details of the T-Rex. It talks about its height, what they think about some of the hypotheses of what its tail was used for, showing its little, little tiny arms, its bite, the idea they think it had a good sense of smell. I thought that that's really a neat display. All right, so one more thing to see before we get out of the Cretaceous and out of the dinosaur section uh, in the museum here. And that is this Marianne Hadrosaur, which is pretty interesting. There actually is some preserved skin on some of the fossils of Hadrosaurs. So pretty neat that they're talking about this Marianne Hadrosaur. And I believe that's the Hadrosaur behind me standing up there. And as I zoom in on this hadrosaur fossil, you can actually see the skin impressions. You can actually see the hadrosaur skin impressions that are preserved and actually see its scales. That's really neat to see. All right, so now we've made it through the time of the dinosaurs and we're gonna start getting into the time of the mammals. Whoa, look at this. This is a woolly rhino. Obviously without the wool, but look at the size of that horn and look at the petrified wood right next to it as well. And here's a picture. There's a saber tooth cat and there's the woolly rhino. Wow, that is awesome. Look at that mammoth. So this would have been a woolly mammoth fossil with a saber tooth cat up in the corner and for all those fans of Ice Age down there, look, it's a saber-toothed squirrel, which is actually not a real thing, but pretty neat to see anyways. And a lot of fun they placed that in the middle of this exhibit. One of the most interesting things that I've learned through paleontology and understanding geology is sometimes the history of where animals originally came from, things like the horse. The horse actually first came from North America, and they actually have a picture of this down below and then spread from North America over into Asia and beyond and eventually became extinct here in the Americas and then of course was reintroduced by the Spanish explorers. Much like the horses, camels were also from North America, migrated across to Asia and beyond and eventually became extinct in North America. And how do we know that? Well, we have trackways from horses and camels that are much older than when the explorers would have come. So suggesting that they were once here and then they disappeared. Of course, we have ancestors of camels, the llamas and alpacas, right? That still survived down in South America. As I go back the other direction, I can't help but be impressed yet again by this collection and by the diversity of this collection and by the wealth of knowledge in this collection and how well it's put together and all the things to see. So he has a section not only on earth science and paleontology and biology, but also on history. So here are Egyptian artifacts, here are artifacts from Greece. I come down this way, here are artifacts from Rome. I keep going down, here are artifacts from, uh, still from Rome, including some rocks 
from some bricks from the Colosseum. Wow, or piece of the Colosseum to look at this old Celtic money to an old Celtic axe to these Bronze Age features and things. Really, really fascinating and a really nicely put together collection. All right, and the last section actually has stuff on Vikings. So for all the Vikings fans out here, look at all the Viking, I guess paraphernalia he's found from ship nails to part of an ax. Wow. To part of an old sword. And I know Viking culture is very popular right now. They have a number of those shows, including Vikings and Last Kingdom. So I'm sure anybody who was into that would be really interested in coming just to see this part of the of the museum. From there, they go into, I don't know if this is Aztec and Mayan and Incan cultures in here. Uh, there's a number of points up here, or arrowheads as people often call them. Then going forward, here's actually a collection of Revolutionary War buttons, stuff from the Revolutionary War, stuff um, from the Civil War, and then a section here on artifacts from indigenous people, including all the way back to the Clovis people. And of course, we're in Texas, so you have to include your barbed wire. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this tour of the Naranjo Natural History Museum. What an amazing museum. What a gem of a place to find. It's not busy. I'm the only person in here right now. I definitely think it's worth a trip if you're coming from Houston. It's a couple hours away. It's a pretty unique museum. It has unique exhibits. It's going to have things you're probably not going to see in a lot of other places. Really worth coming to check out. I really enjoyed how everything was laid out, how simply it was explained, and the fossils and the artifacts. Amazing. I am blown away by this museum and I look forward to coming back and visiting again. I will leave a link down below so you can learn more about this museum and how to visit. If you enjoyed this video, Please give it a thumbs up if you haven't already. Please subscribe to this channel. Keep up on all my adventures. You can hit the little bell for notification in YouTube and that'll let you know as soon as I upload a new video. So I really hope again you enjoyed this video. I so enjoyed myself here. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you in the next episode and take care. You know it's gotta be an awesome museum when this is the mural in the restroom.